All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. All my junior woodchuck uh, treasure hunters out there. We have another edition of the Pocket Change Marker Report, this time for May 28th. I think this might be the last one for the month of May. Uh, if this is your first time joining in one of these videos, uh, yeah, they're kind of long, but allow me to explain. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the, uh, the coolest areas and varieties in coins that are being found by, uh, by just folks. You know, they're certain searching, cherry picking, hunting through change and all that. Uh, these are all realized sales from eBay within the last 24 to 48 hours. Um, so yeah. This is this is how we do it. Uh, we get to show you uh, some of the most successful sales of the past day or two, and uh, kind of highlight a little bit of what can be found out there today. Um, I, I think one of the most popular things today is coin roll hunting. That's the uh, sport, the activity of going to your local bank, picking up rolls of coin in all different types of denominations, and really searching through them to find some of the coins that you're going to see on video today. Now, they're not all from pocket change and roll finds. People are also identifying these coins at coin shops, uh, coin shows. They're even cherry picking coins on eBay, coins that otherwise have been uh, overlooked by the folks that are selling them. That's another good way to um, not only make a few bucks if you wanted to flip it yourself, but to enhance your collection by adding a really nice piece at a low cost. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Uh, all coins, of course, are ungraded. All photos are original to the listings. I didn't juice them or do anything specific to make them a lot bigger than they are. Uh, the coins will certainly speak for themselves. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the first item of note. And this is one that I've highlighted on a number of occasions ever since I did my kind of kickoff video. Uh, kind of late to the party, by the way. But uh, this is a 2013 dollar bill uh it is indeed a star note you can see that little star donated or uh, denoted rather not donated de denoted at the end of the serial number now the interesting thing about this note is it's what's referred to as a duplicate star uh the reason why is that this particular serial number with a star has been printed twice so there are two notes out there with the same serial number and a star um, the only difference being that they were printed at two different facilities. Uh, this one right here, you can tell right here, this tiny little FW here at the uh, the uh, the print um, uh, printing plate number um, it denotes Fort Worth. All right, so that's the facility that printed this one. But there are also a number of them that were printed at the Washington D.C. facility back in about 2014. So that is why there is a uh, duplicate um, uh, printing of each serial number for the New York. You're going to make sure it has the B here in this black seal. Um, and people are actually trying to find the pairings. Uh, so the two same serial numbers, just the two different printings. And um, they're worth quite a bit more money if you could find a match. Now the singular notes... Uh, sell for a lot more than other star notes uh, that are not 2013 B series. This one right here ended up selling for $24.64. These are a regular seller week in, week out on eBay uh, as people begin to kind of assemble a nice little um, set of them. And, and what they do is they really do go out and they uh, headhunt for the, the pairings uh, of that note. So uh, something a little bit interesting. Again, they don't have to be in the greatest of shape. This one here is pretty well circulated. So yeah, almost 25 bucks for this one. Uh, the next one that we have here is just a really nice cherry pick. If not for the little minor errors on the reverse, uh, this one right here would just be a really good typepiece. But it's an 1868 shield nickel that exhibits uh, little small kind of cuds on the reverse. You can see them right there on the rim and in the denticles. Uh, but you could see them going all the way around, little rim cuts. Uh, I mean, that that's kind of the, the premise on why this one was being sold on eBay. Uh, the seller had made it known that this one had uh, little cut errors on the reverse. Uh, but all in all, I think it's just a really good typepiece. I think it's sold more for the actual coin and less about the errors because they're kind of on the minor side. This one sold for $54.85 with nine bids. 
All right, so on occasion, I'll throw in a little bit of a, uh, you know, silver bullion action uh, because I know that's, you know, a popular thing to talk about these days. Uh, considering that physical metal is highly desired and quite expensive um, in relation to the actual melt value of the pieces themselves, we have an old vintage crown, uh, crown mint is the name of this, silver ingot. Uh, this is, I guess, what you could call a uh, a poured uh, bread loaf. Maybe not so much a bread loaf. It doesn't have the, the you know, the, the billowing texture of it. But um, this bar right here is a triple nine fine. Um, it was actually dubbed as being an error. I guess a die trial of some sorts. Um, not particularly familiar with the Crown Mint uh, silver bars. Uh, but this one was um, was sold and it's a neat little piece. There's the back of the, the bar for you. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty plain there. Uh, this one ended up selling for $95. Uh, keep in mind, this is a one ounce bar. So because of its vintage, it's sold for quite a bit more than what melt value is. Which is uh, right above four times uh, what that, is, uh, what that uh, melt value is for the, uh, the silver here. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting to, uh, to note, uh, if you guys come across any old vintage silver bars, there is a, uh, pretty wide market for them. The next one that we have here is the 1954S Lincoln Wheat Scent. This coin is in fantastic shape. It's a very, very lustrous minty example. Um, even has a little bit of what we call, uh, the improper alloy mix that has kind of a witty, uh, kind of appearance to it. Uh, but most importantly, uh, for this particular date, uh, this one was sold as a BIE. It's got a little die chip that connects to B and E and Liberty, and it forms it, it, what it looks to be a letter I, and that's how it gets its namesake. Um, these are collected all across the board by progression, different states. Um, there's a bunch of them, and uh, you know, the higher the grades, the more that people are willing to pay on them. Uh, these do have kind of a ceiling. I don't see too many of them sell in excess of 20 bucks. This particular example sold for $11.80. And uh, because of that, I think it's probably one of the more common uh, BIE uh, die chip states uh, that you'll find out there. But always look out for these, even though for the examples that are a little bit more circulated, they still command 5 to $10. Uh, this is really easy money right here. And here's another one that people have been uh, just hunting through for years. Uh, you're going to find that a lot of the uh, the LP2s or the formative year uh, Lincolns, that's where Lincoln's sitting on a log on the reverse, um, they're coming up quite scarce in just good old pocket change. And that's probably okay because uh, a lot of them aren't in the greatest of shapes. However, there are still quite a few of these in uh, BU rolls, all right. So BU rolls still exist out there for around five bucks or less. Um, they represent a really nice opportunity to cherry pick for some of these well-known doubled die reverses, uh, the doubled thumbs, and there's a bunch of them. There's scores of them, uh, well in excess of a hundred different types of doubled dies for this one, and they're all on the Philadelphia minted coins. So you want to make sure there's no P mint mark underneath the date. That's a give you kind of like your first. Uh, first qualifier for looking for one of these. Uh, that's what that looks like there. Uh, you can see the double thumb. Uh, kudos to the seller for illustrating the uh, with the arrows uh, exactly what we're looking at here. This is just one of many. There's even some that looks like a skeleton finger, uh, which is quite crazy looking. Uh, but this one right here is sold for $24.99. Uh, this is considered to be one of the more major double to die uh, or doubled finger varieties of the LP2. Now here's a nice uh, little circulated lot of two dollar bills here. They're both errors. Uh, the first one you see at the top has uh, what looks to be a gutter fold. Uh, so there was a little bit of a wrinkle in the sheet before it was printed over. Uh, the bottom note doesn't really look anything spectacular until we look at the back and come to find out that the bottom note had a misaligned uh, reverse print, uh, so the sheet was probably fed a little bit um, uh, improperly, and uh, in relation to everything that's printed on the front, uh, is misaligned. So, uh, yeah, pretty nuts. You can see a little bit of the corresponding next note on the subject sheet, uh, just a little sliver, but it's there. Uh, but here is also that gutter fold as well. 
Uh, so yeah, the the sheet was never uh, stretched out uh, before before the printings occurred. So you're going to get an obvious absence of any inking in that area. Uh, this uh, pairing here sold for sixty six dollars and sixty cents with twenty four bits. Uh, so not too bad, uh, considering that people collect these by uh, condition. Um, you know, if you didn't want to bother just selling these individually, you know, you could sell them, uh, sell them as a, a group, I guess. Uh, but also know that you might get a little bit less money for it because it's considered a, um, a bulk lot and you do, you do sell them for a discount. All right. So this is the, probably one of the main reasons why you want to look through world coins is finding some of these errors this is a 1945 half penny from the uh, continent of australia uh, but take a look at that it's got a really nice rim to rim die crack that bisects nearly right down the middle of the coin um i think this is probably one of my favorite designs just having you know a good old kangaroo on the reverse uh, is quite cool and, and very um, emblematic of the uh, you know the country slash continent. Uh, but yeah, look out for things like this. You know, um, world coin errors are an incredibly underrated um, subject area that most people still to this day have not looked through. And I think uh, in time there will be a lot more desirability for these. Um, you know, especially especially the, the more of the word that gets out to the people that, uh, you know, these are going to be desirable and, uh, you know, quite valuable in the long run. That's to give folks reason to want to look through them. Uh, this one right here is sold for $9.50. So we do have another bisecting die crack type of coin uh, later on down the line. That's, uh, that's a huge stark contrast to this particular coin. Personally, I like this one a lot better. Now, uh, this out-of-focus guy right here is a 1997 Lincoln Memorial Cent. So, you're going to see that this one has an indent, and that happens when two planchets are overlapping during the strike, uh, which will leave a void right there. And, uh, yeah, that area is quite thin, but you'll also see it on the reverse as well. So, this one is uh, this one has an indent, and the coin is partially broad struck as well, uh, which makes sense. Um, the, the coin is a little bit bigger. Um, the, the collar was not present during the strike to hold the coin in during that process. So that metal flow goes outwards a little bit. Uh, this one ended up selling for $21.50 with two bids. And note that if you're going to say that you can't find stuff like this, look at the coin. It's not a brand new out of a mint roll or bag. This one's circulated quite a bit, even showing a little bit of uh, corrosion in a few areas. And again, you know, this is this is kind of like the flavor of the month right here, 2022 Lincoln Shield scent with the uh, phenomenal Clash dies. This one is also freshly attributed on the website um, maddieclashes.com. Uh, so go ahead and check it out. This one is referred to as TDC-1C-2022-01. So it's the one and only die clash um, that has been attributed for the brand new 2022 Lincolns. So you can see that clashing here on both the, re uh, uh, the front of the coin, but most specifically the back of uh, Abraham Lincoln's uh, head going into Liberty and also on the front there in front of his face you can see some of that clashing uh pretty well evident uh still again another solid seller here at thirty dollars and 89 cents with 14 bids i think over time as more people are finding these the prices will dip a little bit um you know we'll probably end up seeing these dip into the 20s here real soon uh, especially going through summer the next one that we have here is uh, actually a really cool one because it comes from the Denver Mint. This is a 2021D Lincoln Shield scent uh, with a lot of lot of weakness to the strike. And this is all attributed to just a fresh application of grease on the dies, all right, and all of its working uh, parts to ensure that the press is uh, moving like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say it, like a well-oiled machine. But when you have a lot of grease on the dies as the coins are being struck, it's not going to uh, strike all of the devices uh, sharply as they could because it has to go through all that material. This coin right here, wow, sold for $50, guys. 
a lot of value here. You don't see too many of these, and it's a Denver Mint. Some would say that Denver Mint produces some of the highest quality coins, but this pretty much tells a different story. Now here's just a really nice example of a 1965 Washington quarter. Now the seller had said that this is a uh, double clip, but uh, it could be just a singular clip with just a really robust Blakesley effect right here under the date. Kind of hard to say, and that's the tough part about these uh, um, these coins where you have a clip and then you have some sort of anomaly that's directly across from the coin on the other side uh, or the other side or the other rim, I guess. Uh, but if you look on the reverse, it doesn't show any semblance of a clip right here. So, you know, th this is something, again, that uh, it, it could be, it could just be a singular clip with just a really, really strong Blakesley. This one sold for $26.99. These clips in all different sizes and shapes are being found in circulation. So make sure you look for these. Now, we haven't talked about uh, well, well off-center coins. And uh, someone had made mention that, you know, these things are impossible to look for and change. So why even talk about them? Uh, well, you know, that, that might be the case. Uh, it wasn't the case uh, as recently as about 2003 uh, when you were still able to get canvas bags of these uh, direct from the Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, but these coins, yeah, were found in those uh, in, in you know, regular numbers um, that there is a lot of them available. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about uh, what the most attractive off-center coin would look like. So this one's off-center by about 65%, uh, uh, give or take. Uh, it's a 95P. Uh, and what's really neat about this one, it gives it a whole lot of uh, desirability, is going to be the full date and uh, mint mark uh, among just the overall just beauty of the coin. I would say it's a really nice mid-state condition. Uh, this one sold for $56.55 with nine bids. Keep in mind, if you go to a coin shop or a show and someone's like fire selling these things, because there are some dealers, they just don't deal in error coins. So let's say had they have this for like 20 bucks. You know, now you know what kind of market's out there. These are a very strong seller because people are assembling them by date and they're putting together collections of these. Uh, here's another one of those 2013B dollar bills, but this one has a little extra twist, all right? It's got a serial number that some would see as uh, a fancy, you know, it's quite appealing. Uh, now, let's not throw the word trinary out there. That's not really a designatable type of fancy serial number. Some people have tried and some people have cried. Um, yeah, let not, let's, let's not make that a thing. Uh, but yeah, some, some will look at this and say, oh, that's a pretty neat serial number. It's also one of those duplicate serial numbers on a Fort Worth printing. Uh, this one ended up selling for $32.65 with five bids. And here's another one here. Again, uh, a $50 bill, uh, 2013. Uh, note is in relatively pretty good shape. I would say it's uh, it's really nice shape. I don't know what this is right here. It might be some sort of staining or whatever, but um, this was pitched as a low serial number star, all right? And, uh, it, you know, make what you want to make out of it. Uh, it's a four-digit serial uh, as far as the low serial number. Uh, to me, I don't think that's quite low enough, but, you know, based off of the sale, what do I know? It's sold for uh, $105. So if you come across these in all denominations and um, they're, is, they're in really nice shape like this one is, you might want to consider selling it um, because the money is just really good for these right now. Now here's one I'm willing to bet a lot of folks aren't looking for. This is a 1982p Kennedy half dollar. Uh, no, this one does have the FG initials on the reverse. Although this is the one of the dates to look for for the missing initials uh, for Frank Gasparo. But this one's here for a different reason. Uh, this one actually has a little collar cud, uh, which is similar to a regular cud on either the obverse or reverse of the coin. Uh, the collar in itself that holds the coin in during the strike is indeed a die. So those particular dies do. Uh, they do crack, little pieces do fall off of them on occasion, and uh, this is kind of like a byproduct of what you would expect a collar cud to look like when a piece of that collar had uh, fallen off at some time. 
so you know don't ignore these that they're not as you know widely i don't know coveted as regular cuts uh but this one right here ten dollar bill um sure beats not selling it for 10 bucks uh so if you come across these in your roll hunts uh, make sure you hold on to these um they do have quite a bit of value now here's a pleasing 1889O, very very well loved, very well circulated, and um, that's that's not a typo. The, this was actually rotated die error. Uh, it's rotated clockwise by about 85 90 degrees. It's close to 90. It's not quite there, so it's somewhere between 85 and 90 uh, 90 degrees for the rotation. But uh, yeah, quite a few of these are being found in in just good old bulk silver. So. Uh, Make sure you do your, do yourself a favor, flip these over. Uh, you're going to tr transform a coin that otherwise would sell for about twenty eight to thirty dollars into something a lot more. This particular coin ended up selling for one hundred seventy eight dollars and thirty nine cents, and that's with twenty seven bids. There were a lot of folks particularly interested in this example. Now here's our uh, another cud die break. This time not on the edge like the candy, but this one right here is on the obverse. Uh, the pictures are a little bit out of focus, but that's okay. I think we get the gist of what's happening here. Uh, so you see the cud die break piece of the die had fallen off, uh, and then any subsequent coins that are struck um, will have a void in that area. As the metal flow goes in in that area, it's going to be a raised event. Uh, this one even has a little bit of a die crack that goes from the top of the memorial into the letter N in United here on the reverse. Uh, that's pretty cool. This one sold for $25.76 with six bits. There's another strike through, this time on the 1999. Uh, this one is a Philadelphia, Connecticut quarter. So you can see that some of the, uh, the motto in God we trust is missing along with a little bit of uh, the word America. Uh, so yeah, the dies had a little bit of grease on there. Uh, it struck this example, which shows uh, a little bit of weakness in certain areas. Uh, this one sold for $32.99. And here's another, uh, another kind of area or denomination or series to uh, cherry pick because there's a lot to find here. This is a, uh, a matron head, 1836 large scent. Um, the, this particular one right here has its issues. It's got a lot of scratches and shows a lot of corrosion, especially on the obverse of the coin. Uh, but this is a known Newcomb, uh, variety, uh, which has a pretty nice sized cud right here. I've seen them a little bit bigger. I've seen them in different positions on the obverse of these coins. Uh, but this is another good one to kind of cherry pick again. Uh, these coins in this condition, are generally not that expensive, you know, around 20, 25 bucks. Uh, and, you know, you could either add it to your collection, um, maybe collect the Newcombs. They come in different rarities. This one right here ended up selling for $48.43. So, um, yeah, still quite a bit of value, uh, even corroded coins. Um, the higher rarities and the more eye-appealing type coins for those particular uh, uh, die pairings are always going to be coveted. All right, so we haven't talked about the Kansas uh, 2005P In God We Rust coin in quite some time, but this one needed a little bit of a, uh, I guess, kudos. Um, I, I mean, you can tell this one, the, the T is missing in trust. Uh, Phil dies, so the, the die in that particular area had a nice, uh, nice little impacted grease and debris area. Um, that won't strike the letter T uh, on a lot of these, and that's how it gets its uh, its namesake, I guess. And it's always on the Kansas State quarter. Uh, this one is particularly strong because it just affects the T, the first T in trust. And uh, usually with these in God we rust strike throughs or filled dies, uh, usually you see some of the other letters uh, have a little weakness. This one it does not. This one, uh, shockingly, sold for forty dollars and that's with 20 total combined bids so uh there were people that that liked the isolation of this strike through and probably bid it up accordingly uh here's another statehood quarter this time a 2001 denver Ken uh, uh kentucky i was gonna say kennedy kentucky uh state quarter 
Uh, this one's off center by about 10%. And uh, again, people are collecting these off center strikes, trying to assemble one of every state uh, if possible. It's, it's a very challenging uh, subset from what I heard. This one right here sold for $14.50 with two bids. And here's a 2003 P Roosevelt dime. This one uh, is a little bit off center and also exhibits a partial tilted collar. So you can see that stepped edge area here on the obverse right on the edge. All right. So the, the collar was a little bit tilted during the strike. And uh, this is your end product here. Uh, this one sold for $14.50 as well as a buy it now listing. And we got a couple quarters here. How about 79? Uh, this time with a, uh, a straight edged clip. Uh, so that, that you can see there. Uh, you got Blinksley effect that's very noticeable on the reverse rim area. Uh, coin, I would say, is probably AU condition. It's definitely circulated a little bit. This one sold for $12.30. So uh, this one at first glance looks to be damaged. You know, like someone had scraped it up against something. Uh, like a sidewalk or, you know, just a ground or something that, that has tooth to it to remove material. But based off of what I'm seeing here, this is a legit error. And from the same seller, we have an 84P Washington Quarter. This one is uh, a little bit broad struck. Uh, so uh, this is an uncentered broad struck is what it's classified as. Again, this coin has seen some circulation where, uh, again, this is something you could find out there. Okay, and... Uh, if you say otherwise, I will tell you to go back into the video and look at this coin. Look at it. Look at the previous coin with the clip. These are all being found going through quarter rolls. I guarantee it. Uh, this particular example right here sold for $18.30. Uh, again, uh, it's the little, little sales that add up to the bigger picture. Now, this is a uh, really cool one that I haven't talked about in quite some time. This is the uh, good old John Adams 2007 Philadelphia minted uh, presidential dollar coin. Uh, this is uh, made during the first year of the series uh, that fizzled out pretty quickly after like year two. Uh, but this is the doubled edge lettering uh, variety type. Uh, you can see right here, you can see the overlapping uh, letters. Uh, this thing's crazy. I own one myself. In a PCGS holder, that they're not particularly expensive, but when you find one, they're worth more than a dollar. I can tell you that. Uh, this particular example sold for thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. If you looked at their original picture of the coins, uh, you know it's it's not in particularly great shape, but you know it's not the worst shape either. Now here's a really nice high grade specimen of a. Um, the 63D Lincoln Memorial Set. This is the double to die obverse FS101 variety. When we look up closer at the date, you can see the uh, this extra spike here inside the bottom curl of the three is actually this pointed tip right here of the three, the inside of the three that's been doubled. All right. Some examples, especially the uh, earlier state, will have a bottom curl of the three as well. This one does not have a very good one, if any. Um, but yeah, this is a, a really good one to look out for. It's a cherry picker's guide variety. It's FS 101 in there. This one ended up selling for $29 and 25 cents. Now here's a, uh, a relatively newer dollar bill. This is a 2013. Uh, this one has a, uh, a misaligned or, um, uh, inadvertently printed black district seal. That's way over here. I've seen these on a few occasions. A few of them have popped up. On, I believe, fives and uh, I think maybe a $20 bill is where I've seen these. Uh, but that's pretty crazy right there. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is one to look out for on your dollar bills. If you could, if you could find it, if you do search through paper, some people just don't like doing it because it's not their thing. And I get it. Uh, but this is another thing that you could find out there in the wild. Uh, this one right here sold for $230.45 with 43 total bids. Uh, bet a lot of currency uh, people were looking for this one and we're looking forward to putting a bid in. So our feature subject coin of the week is not a pretty one. Actually, I feel sorry for this coin. Uh, it's a 1987 Lincoln Memorial Cent. It, 
uh, this thing is is just corroding right before our very eyes. You can see that plainly on the obverse. However, you'd be hard pressed to find another example with a just huge die crack uh, that goes from the word states there right at the rim. It goes almost all the way through. Uh, it doesn't quite go all the way to uh, to the end or through the end here in scent. Uh, but boy, is this thing strong. Uh, not too bad for a Zinkin also. Yeah, but you're never going to believe how much this puppy sold for. Uh, it ended up selling for $95. Um, now, the question is, is it justifiable? Is it worth it? Well, it's worth it to the buyer. Uh, and I can tell you this right now. This is a scarce one. You just don't see this one at all. I think I've talked about this one. On one other occasion, it was probably close to two years ago. That's how infrequently this particular die crack error comes up. So, make sure you flip over those 87 guys and uh, look for this. Uh, this is a strong one. Now, if um, originality is, is not your thing and you're okay with it, um, and you're looking for a high profile variety, this 1942 over one mercury dime might be for you now the seller was honest and said it's clean and it looks every bit that this one however has that just strong over date that everybody looks for this is like one of the biggest varieties in in u.s coins today uh if you're not looking for this then you're not doing the hobby right that's for sure uh but you know a coin in this condition still worth a lot of money this one sold for 385 dollars Always good to see one of these. This is actually a sale from Texas, which um, which is sounds about right. Uh, it's a 2004D Washington Quarter with the low leaf variety. You can see that low leaf right here. Uh, picture's a little bit out of focus. I had to blow these up a little bit to get in close. Uh, so that way you guys can see what I'm looking at. But uh, yeah, coin's not in particularly the hottest of shape. Uh, probably in a technical AU condition coin. Uh, these back in 2004 were dumped in the Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas region of the United States. And that's where even to this day, a lot of folks are finding these. These are still wildly valuable. Um, even coins in this particular condition still are worthwhile to sell if you have them. Uh, this one right here is sold for $69. So uh, yeah, not a cheap coin still and uh, it'll still guarantee you a few bucks. Yeah, you thought we were going to make it all the way through this PCMR without talking about the new quarters. Well, we got one here. Quick little update check on value. Uh, this is a Maya Angelou 2022P with the strike through. This is the only relevant quarter I would say that's worth talking about today. So the uh, strike through here is uh, uh, just grease and debris that's been um, kind of spread around and been pushed around by the feeder finger. Uh, so on this coin, you probably probably would even still see feeder finger scrapes from the die transferred onto any subsequent coins. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good one. This is again similar to the Tuskegee Airmen Strike Through and the um, uh, American Samoa uh, Bat Face Quarter as well. Uh, sold for fifty five dollars. Uh, still a pretty decent seller today. And uh, generally, if you come across rolls of these and you find like say one you will find more uh, because they, they travel uh, in big groups. And if you could do that, uh, you're going to come across a pretty nice honey hole. So make sure you're looking out for these. And then to end it off on this edition of the PCMR, uh, or the final one for the month of May, uh, this is a 1972 FS101 double the die offers. Sold none other by uh, Coins and Cards on eBay. Uh, always selling a lot of great uh, raw pieces uh, again throw this one in the mix as well uh, showing of course all of the relevant major doubling uh, from the date to liberty to the motto to the front of lincoln's jacket so on and so forth this coin really doesn't need any further introduction from me you guys know this one sold for 665 dollars and 55 cents with 47 staggering total number of bids to complete this one out but well, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. Uh, I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hopefully this video gives you a little bit of inspiration to do some hunting of your own. I would love to hear some of your uh, 
your uh, your wins, your most recent finds, and um, you know that's what we all live for is the the thrill of the hunt and uh, being able to go through coins at the bank at uh, at face value is is the best feeling ever. So you guys have fun, have a great weekend, and I will see you on the next coin video. You guys take care now. So long.